Good morning. Um, how was camping, gentlemen? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, did you snuggle with any mice? Any mice? Any mice? No spiders. 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 Yeah, I heard. I heard stories of spiders. Um, so yeah, see, could be worse, ladies. Yeah, see, they could, you know. Uh, and I heard uh, adventures of, with salamanders, right, and some toads. God rest her. So we won't say what happened to the toads. All right, we, just, we won't want to speak of that. We won't speak of that evil. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick for the counselors, uh, your cabin talk questions. We we're flipping some things around. So uh, just so you know, after after today or after this this one, this message, uh, just flip and do Friday a.m. instead of Thursday a.m. Okay. So Friday a.m. instead of Thursday a.m. in your cabin talk, all right? Uh, so just so you know that, so you're, you're discussing the correct stuff. Um, so question for you, uh, do you believe God is willing and able to continue to transform and mold you into the man woman God is calling you to be? Convincing, right? And maybe that's just being tired a little bit. But the reality is, there is a, like I've always said, that this is a choice that you get to make, right? To believe and trust in God and allowing him to transform you, to make you new, right? To, make, to give you new identity in who Jesus Christ is. Because though our week is coming to an end, this isn't the end, but just the beginning of God doing amazing things in your life. When we begin a personal relationship with Jesus, we're given new life, right? We've talked about that. We're given new life and a life filled with meaning and purpose, a new identity. And we've talked about 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Maybe you've already memorized it. You know it, but I want to say it again. Anyone, this means anyone who belongs to Christ, in other words, who has begun a relationship with him, has become a what? A new person, a new creation, right? It has been transformed. And it says that what? The old is what? The old life is gone. The new has come. Do you believe it? I just want you to think about that. Don't, don't, don't respond. To, do you believe that's true? That those of you who made decisions to find freedom on Tuesday and to learn and grow and say yes to Jesus, your relate, as a person who's Lord and Savior, that the old is gone, the new has come. Well, uh, I want to I wanna kind of solidify this a little bit. Okay, so imagine with me right now, I know that we were out in nature. Gentlemen, you guys were out in nature. Ladies, you were out in nature yesterday. Gentlemen, uh, or last night and ladies the other night before, right? Out in nature. Imagine right now that you are a caterpillar. I know, stay with me on this one, all right? All right? Imagine with me that you are a caterpillar, and your life consists of a little patch of area ground, and you crawling around in your squishy, gushy self, right? No, just, just little arms and little legs just kind of scooting around, and, you, you'd, and you're finding, you're crawling up on to these, these plants, and you're munching, on, you're munching down on this smorgasbord of leaves, nom, 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 nom. okay? Right? You're a caterpillar. And, and just like us, like when it comes to Thanksgiving and you munch down on a ton of food, what happens? You start to get what? Full. And then you want to do what? Sleep, Sleep right? Like when we eat and we get our full, we want to take a little bit of a nappy, all right? And so imagine you're a caterpillar, you're climbing on these leaves and these, these trees and you're munching down on some leaves, a smorgasbord, the buffet of leaves that you have. And all of a sudden, you start getting full, and all of a sudden, you start getting tired, and you're like, I'm going to take a nap, right? And so you take a nap, and it's a long, long nap. And all of a sudden, this nap, you get all warm and cozy. You know, like you ever, you know, you know like you get like, I don't know if you ever have weighted blankets or not, though. Maybe just when you get older, you get that or whatever, right? But like, you get all snuggly and warm, and you're just taking this long nap. And then you wake up, and all of a sudden your arms are a lot longer, and you're like, oh, shut up! What is this? No way! I 
have wings. What is going I can fly, right? And now you're flying. Your perspective of life has just changed incredibly. Before, you were just this little worm on the ground, and all you knew of your world was this little bit of a world, right? But now you can fly, you can soar, right? And you can, you can see life in a different perspective. You've completely what? You've completely what? Transformed. You are given a new life. Do you think that caterpillar wants to go back to being a caterpillar after they get a chance to be a butterfly? No. They don't. Because that's not what they were created for. They were not created to go back to their old life. The same is true for us. When we experience this new life in Jesus... And we say, God, I'm committing my life to you. It's no longer my, my desires, my will, what I want, my selfishness. It's now it's you, God. What do you want me to do? Because I'm trusting in you. And if I believe that your promises are true, then I'm going to trust in your promises. And if I believe that you are faithful then, you'll be faithful now. So that no matter what comes my way, no matter what circumstances or calculations that don't add up, God, I'm going to trust that you are faithful. And I'm going to soar. And I'm going to fly the way you called me to. And I'm going to do everything I can to not go back to the old life. As much and as desirable as sometimes that is. You see, as you live a relationship with Jesus, he has transformed you from the inside out. You are no longer defined by your self-worth, or what other people say about you, or your past accomplishments, or your past failures, you are a transformed child of God. That is the truth. And I don't know whether you believe that or not, but that is true. That if you made that decision and you have a relationship with Jesus, that is what has happened. That is what's happening in you. And this decision, this, this idea of transformation does not, is not a one-time moment in life. It's not a one-time moment in a, at a camp called Forest Springs. It's a, it's a daily moment. It's a daily surrendering of, of saying, God, my life is yours. And there's this big church word called sanctification. Say sanctification. sanctification. This word is simply means to, the process of becoming more and more like Jesus. And it takes for us to say, God, I want that. I'm surrendering my will so that your will may be done. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of God. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, transforms us to be more and more like him as we are, are changed into his glorious image. To be more and more like Jesus, what decisions, what choices, what actions are you going to take so that that is your life? What, who will you pursue? The veil of sin and confusion once blinded us from seeing that we needed Jesus, but once removed, we now can see clearly. I can see clearly now. Oh, Jesus is gone. All right? And God, the Holy Spirit, transforms us when we allow him to do so. As I said before, it's not a one-moment type thing. This idea of sanctification to become more and more like Jesus is a daily thing, sometimes a moment-by-moment -moment thing. Because we want, our selfish desires want to go back to what we knew versus continue to move forward to what God has for us. It's trusting and relying on on the God that if he is faithful then, throughout all generations, he'll continue to be faithful to you. That if he's a God who can't break his promises, that we're gonna trust in his promises. And I'm gonna put my faith, even though when circumstances and calculations don't add up, I'm going to trust in the one who's bigger and knows more and has a plan for my life. Truth is, unlike actual transformers who, who try to basically try to disguise themselves and go back to their old life, God is calling us to, go not, to not go back, but to continue to be transformed, to be like him. So 
How do we do this? What's our part? Number one. Say, everybody say number one. one. Be willing. Write it down. Be willing. You and I need to be willing to allow God, the Holy Spirit, to transform our lives. We need to be willing to, tra- for, to allow God to transform our lives, and it takes for us to say, I'm putting, setting aside my selfish desires, and I'm putting your desires, God, for me, and I'm an open hand, and I'm surrendering, God, to you, like a lump of clay in the hands of a potter. Check out this video. The lump of clay by itself is just a lump of clay, right? But when put in the right hands, it is shaped and it's molded into something beautiful, something with purpose and meaning. So I have a question for you campers. Who are you being shaped by? If you were honest with yourself, who are you being shaped by? Are you allowing God? Are you surrendering, saying, God, shape me? Teach me to be more like you. Or are you saying, God, you know what? Camp thing is very good. It's fun. I love the, everything I get to do there. But honestly, I still really like doing my own thing. Or God, I feel like this is my identity. God, I feel like this is who I'm supposed to be. This is what I identify with because that's what's accepting me. God, I know that you call me to be this. I, you call me to be a child of God. But God, I, I don't believe that you created me in the right way. And so all these questions and feelings that I have are now drawing me to, to take on a, the worldly identity of whatever that might be, fill in the blank, that I only identify through sports. I only identify through a certain sexuality. I only identify through the certain people groups that I'm able to to be embraced by. And God, because the calculations don't add up and the circumstances don't add up, it's a lot easier for me to just embrace this. I don't want you to mold me into who you're calling me to be. Who are you being molded by? Are you allowing the world to transform you because it's just easier, but in the long run, I'm telling you, it leads to destruction. As I said, I don't want to underestimate you, and so I want to be bold with you. Hear me. When the Bible says there's a path that seems right to a man or woman, but it leads to destruction, it's when we allow the world to mold us instead of God. And you will constantly be battling these desires because we are innately selfish. And it's going to be very easy to just give up and go with the flow of whatever the culture is telling you to do and telling you to be. And God said, no, no, I have something so much greater. You are not created to just crawl on the ground You were created to soar. And if you trust me, and if you believe that my promises are true, then I'm asking you to trust me with each step, with each moment, to be renewed. To be renewed in your relationship with me. But it takes a choice. It takes a pursuing of 
Jesus. And the reality is, I'm not going to underestimate, there is a battle. There are battles that we face, and you know what I'm talking about, the battle of the mind and the heart and the desires that we want to do, the things we want to do and the things we don't want to do, right? Remember, remember Romans 12? What's our, what's our, what's our, our purpose, our, our reasoning? What are we supposed to be doing? And so, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living sacrifice. What's the problem with living sacrifices? What did I tell you it was? What do they do? They crawl off what? The altar. Again, the Israelite people, they would, they would make sacrifices to God. But this idea of a living sacrifice means that we ultimately, we continually have to surrender back to God's plan versus our plan. God's desires at versus our desires. Listen to Romans 8, 5, 6. It says, those who are dominated by sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting your spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Now, if you look at this verse and you read this verse, I guarantee you, I know that you would choose the second. But if you're honest with yourself, then I don't want to underestimate you. The reality is, the truth is that, and it, like me, there, it's so, sometimes so pleasing to, to indulge in the sinful side of things. And this is why it's a daily surrender, saying, when you wake up, saying, God, this day is yours. I give you this day. Help me to give it to you. It's your choice. I can't make it for you. Your parents can't make it for you. Your friends can't make it for you. Your counselors can't make it for you. You have to choose what you want. And we have this battle that's going on in our minds, right? I was talking to my mentor uh, back when I was younger. And he said, Clayton, there's, there's a battle that's raging in all of us, between good and evil, right? We have our godly nature, and we have our selfish, sinful nature. And it's a nature that we both have because of the broken world we live in. And he says it's like this. It's like two wolves that are like fighting, right? You have your godly nature, and you have your sinful nature. It's like these two wolves that are fighting. And he said, Clayton, do you know which one wins? I said, what? He simply said, the one you feed. <laughs> the one you feed. Because it means that you starve the other one. What nature are you feeding? Are you feeding your godly nature? Being here at camp, being here at camp, it's feeding your godly nature. And it should be easy to be a follower of Jesus here at camp. Because you're with like-minded people. You're being encouraged all the time to be who God created you to be. But you are not created to live here. As much as camp would love to have you hang out with them longer, you're not created to stay here. You are created to go out, to fly, to go and be light to others. And the way we do that is by feeding our godly nature, to do the things that we talked about yesterday, to let that not just be some fun little things we did with oranges and, and our fingerprint and we wrote some things down, but for that to be something that becomes a natural part of your life where you grow in your relationship with God and you grow in your relationship with others and you start telling your story about how God transformed your life at camp or wherever it might have been. And it is going to be difficult. Again, I do not want to underestimate you. It is going to be difficult, but it's going to be so worth it. And the more that we surrender, the more we say, God, I want to be more like you, the more God, the more you feed your godly nature. 
and the stronger and bolder you become in your relationship with him. So what nature are you feeding? When it comes to your identity, when it comes to the, the struggles of your identity of, of who you think you are versus who God says you are. Who the world thinks you are versus who God says you are. Let me tell you, it does not go away. I'm an older person, and it doesn't go away. Those question marks of who you think you are versus who God says you are. And I know that I have to continue to go back remind myself of who God says I am, that I am wonderfully and fearfully and marvelously made, that I am God's masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, not to be a slug or something on the ground, but to do something great for such a time as this. Like other people in the Bible, their circumstances didn't add up. If they trusted in who they thought they were, they would not have done the godly, amazing things that they were able to do. Don't waste it. I want everybody to look at your counselor right now. Or at least counselors, make eye contact with the people as best as you can. Like I said before, hey, listen in. Like I said before, your counselors are here for you. They love you. Again, they would not give up their summer or weeks of their summer just to come hang out at a camp and not make an impact in your life. Look back up here. Now, yesterday, I'm just going to give you a little insight. Yesterday, I got a chance to sit with your counselors. And I got to hear their heart for you. And I get emotional about it because they love you. And they want to see you grow. And they pray for you. Because they know that there's so much that you're capable of. If you just allow God to work in you. And that's what it means to be about part of the body of Christ. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus, to be transformed, to be new, take on a new life. That's what it means. You get, to, you get to have some fun living this life, never even having to question where your hope comes from. Because it comes from the true promise keeper, the true transformer. So, so take out opportunities for the little amount of time that we have left. Have the hard conversations. Ask the questions that are tough. They're not going to always have the answers. We're not going to have all the answers, but that's okay. Because that's part of you being transformed, is being willing to wrestle with the hard, to be willing to work through the questions, and to have fun in the midst of it all. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for um, thank you just for being our God. God, thank you for these campers and the time we get to spend together. God, may you just give them a, an awesome rest of the day. And God, would you continue to be heavy on our hearts and our minds of what it means to really be transformed allow you to move in and through us, to soar. In your name, amen. Love you guys.